important when we analyze the prayers that have been answered. We always discover that they were answered in such degree as the one praying was praying aright, and in such degree as his prayer caused his own mind to come to a complete acceptance of a power greater than he was. In the availability of a law of good, which is all-powerful, and in the immediate response of a divine presence to his personal need. Nothing could be more simple than this. And so far, nothing has ever proved more effective. Are our prayers, yours and mine, simple and direct? Are they deep with feeling and above everything else? In our prayers are our affirmative meditations. Do we really reach a place where we completely abandon ourselves to faith? For this must be the secret. You and I need never concern ourselves with any arguments or controversies about whether or not we are right or wrong in our prayers. We do not have to go into abstract discussions about the nature of God. This is all right for philosophers and logicians and I have no doubt that perfect logic and clear, straight thinking would lead us to the same conclusions. But the divine intelligence is not moved by our intellectual attainments. The law of good never asks us what is our background. Rather, it comes softly and silently to the believing mind as though the great giver of life were merely waiting our acceptance as though the law of good automatically moves in to fulfill the secret desire of the sincere soul and the secret ambition of the simple heart. This is the starting point of effective prayer. We are not laboring with a God who is unwilling or a power that is reluctant. And in a certain sense, it seems to me we are not trying to convince everything, anything in the universe but ourselves. For certainly, prayer is an act of the mind. It is a movement of our own thinking, our own consciousness, and within and upon ourselves. So it doesn't seem strange to say that there are certain techniques for prayer. And by a technique is meant that there are certain ways or methods for prayer that are more effective than others. For if what we really convince is our own mind, then the tools that we use are thoughts, whether we choose to call them affirmations of the divine presence or denials of evil. The technique for effective prayer is something that convinces the one who is uttering the prayer. We could go into long arguments about this and project extensive and perhaps profound theories about it until we became lost in a maze of words and philosophies and theologies. But we would only be holding an intellectual argument with ourselves. The very best way to approach the matter simply and directly is to convince our own inward thought that we believe what we say. If our prayers today do not reach a place of complete faith, we can know this. Every meditation of our heart and mind that tends to bring us to a more complete acceptance is storing up within us a growing sense of certainty that must and finally will overcome every obstruction. For you see, the obstructions are within us. They are not outside of us. If they were outside, we couldn't cope with them. But since they are within, and since they are things of thought, we can handle them. Perhaps it would be well for us then to formulate a program which we know we can carry out, and for us to take definite time each day to get away from the pressure of the conditions around us and get quiet and become peaceful and in the solitude of our own thought affirm the presence of the good we desire. Perhaps we would say, I confidently wait on the divine good. I expect to be guided. I joyfully accept this guidance with deep gratitude and with a great feeling of love and clearness and faith in the divine presence. I am open to new ideas and thoughts and aspirations. 
this which so recently seemed a problem to me no longer exists. For the mind of God which knows the answers quietly flowing through, great peace and joy comes over me as I accept this answer from the giver of all life. Believing that the spirit is where I am and that the law of good, which is the law of good and God is active in my affairs, I do now sincerely and simply affirm that I am one with this good, this God. I believe that this good includes everything right and necessary to my happiness, to my peace, to my mental and to my physical well-being. Therefore, I say to myself, there is nothing to be afraid of. Joy goes before me and prepares the way. Love guides me to the fulfillment of everything that is good. Peace surrounds me. I rest in quiet contentment, knowing that all the power there is and all the presence there is is back of everything which I do. It is my desire that I shall bless everyone I contact, that I shall bring new hope and joy to every situation I meet. It is my desire to help every person I contact. Joyfully I wait on the law of good, Gladly, I enter into communion with life. With a deep sense of gratitude, I give thanks. And I know that I shall sleep in peace and wake in joy and live in a consciousness of good. I know there is one power. That power is the power of God. I know there is one presence, which is the presence of God in and around me. I know that I am surrounded by this presence, flows through me, even as it flows around me. And in this presence, I am at peace.